Okay, I'm glad you're here to see uh, this video on uh, systems of equations using matrices. And so what we're going to talk about now is the Gauss-Jordan elimination, uh, where we use augmented matrices um, to solve them. So make sure you read the, the notes here in this section. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to solve a system of equations using an augmented matrix. Um, first thing we have to do if you have a system of equations you have to put the system of equations in matrix form. So here you see I have uh, two equations 2x plus y equals 8 and then second equation x plus 3y equals 9. So the augmented matrix you just put the coefficients in 2 for 2x, 1 for 1y, and then put the constant 8 in. And then for the second row, you put 1 in for 1x, 3 in for 3y, and then 9 in for the constant there. And you can separate your constants from your coefficients with a vertical line. Uh, some texts you'll see they use a dotted line, but when I'm doing it, it's quicker just to use a vertical line. Okay, now this one, the coefficients for x is 1, y is 2, z is negative 1, and the constant's 1. So this will be 1, 2, negative 1, 1 for the first row. And then uh, this one is 2, negative 1 right there. That's a negative 1. And then this is a 1 coefficient and 6. So we have 2, negative 1, 1, 6 for the second row. And then the third row, we have an understood 1 here. 3, negative 2, and negative 1. So that's your third row. So that's how you take a system of equations and write it as an augmented matrix. Make sure that you're not, you don't run across any tricky ones where they rearrange the x's and y's in one of the equations and catch you off guard. Like this one might say y plus 3x, and then you just automatically do 1, 3 when you should do 3, 1. So just read the, make sure, just rewrite the problem where, you know, your x's, y, your x, y, and z are all in the same order uh, when you set it up. There actually are three types of row operations that we can do to an augmented matrix that does not change the solution. Um, you can swap two rows, and that's the notation I use for swapping. So if I wanted to swap row one with row two, I would use this notation to show you that this matrix here is equivalent to this matrix, which is the result I would get when I swap the rows. The other thing we can do is we can multiply a row by a matrix by any number we like other than zero and replace a row with that. So what I'm going to do here is, and there's no rhyme or reason for this, I'm just showing you I can do it. I'm going to multiply row 1 by 3, and I'm going to put that in row 1. So if I multiply everything here by 3, that would, be, that would become a 6, that would become a 3, and that would become a 24. And so I'm just going to replace row 1 with those values. And then finally, one other thing you can do is you can actually replace a row with a multiple of one row plus another row. So for instance here, again there's no rhyme or reason for why I'm doing it, it's just a random example. If I wanted to multiply row 1 by 3, add the result to row 2, and then put the result, the final result, in row 2, I could. So if I multiplied this row by 3, that would give me 6, 3, and of course 24. Now I'm not actually going to change row 1. I'm going to change row 2. See, notice I'm putting in row 2. So then I'm going to take these values and add them to row 2. So I'm going to say 6 plus 1 is 7. I'll put that in row 2. And then 3 plus 3 is 6. Put that in row 2. And then 24 plus 9 is 33. So I'll put that in row 2. So those are the three basic row operations. Now, obviously there is a place that we want to go. We would like to get 
our augmented matrix, here's our augmented matrix right here, we would like to get this augmented matrix into this form, if possible. If we can get that augmented matrix in that form, then we can take the equations back out of this, and this would be 1x plus 0y equals 3, which is just x equal 3, and then 0y plus 1, I'm sorry, 0x plus 1y equals 2, so that's the same as y equal 2. So anyway, if we can get it in this form, and this is called reduced row echelon form, or REF. So reduced row echelon form, basically, you have ones down the diagonals as you go from the top left to the bottom right. And then all the other elements are zeros, uh, if, if possible. There are certain, some situations where you can't make it look exactly like this. But this is an example of reduced row echelon form. And then for this larger matrix, this example is an example of reduced row echelon form. Notice again, I have ones down the diagonal, and then all the other elements to the left of this vertical line are zeros. And then I can easily see, if I get this augmented matrix in this form, I can see that x would equal 2, y would equal 3, and z would equal 1. So the question is, how do we get it in that form? You can read this definition of what it means to be in reduced row echelon form, but I'm actually going to show you a few examples here. As, as I showed you that first one, the first two up there, those are in reduced row echelon form. Now, when you have a system that gives you uh, no solution or infinitely many solutions, then it's not going to look exactly like these first two. Like this one, you know, you can get the one here, you can get the one here, but I couldn't get a one here. So I have a row of zeros, and since I don't have a one here, I can't eliminate these guys. Um, this one is, if you only had two equations and three variables, your problem might look like this. And then uh, here's another example with two equations and three variables. And this one, um, you would actually... Uh, you actually, this, you'd actually know what the z value is, but x and y would actually depend on one another. So those are some examples. So the question is, how do we get there? How do we get to these reduced row echelon forms? Well, the key is, first, is you get a 1 in the first row, first column entry. And you can swap rows or you can multiply by a row by the appropriate constant to do that. And then after we get the 1, we want to use that 1 to eliminate the elements above or below that 1. So every time we get the 1, we're going to eliminate any elements that are above or below that 1. That, we call that the leading 1. So like right here, we have a leading 1 and we have eliminated everything below it. Here we have a leading one in this row, and we've eliminated everything above it and below it. And here we have a leading one in this row, and we eliminate everything above it. So that's pretty much the order that we're going to go in. So let's do a simple example. Now before I do an example, let me tell you that I'm, I'm probably writing twice as much information down on this example than I will later, because I'm I'm going to basically be duplicating a matrix each time I do a step. So you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Okay, we know how to take a system like this and write it as an augmented matrix. So let's get started. Okay, so we look in right here, the row 1, column 1 entry. Now we want that to be a 1. So what we're going to do is I'm going to swap these two rows because I have a 1 down here. If I didn't have that 1 to swap with, I could always multiply row 1 by the reciprocal of 2. But since I can swap, let's just swap row 1 with row 2. Now that's going to just put row 2 on top and put row 1 on bottom. Now this is what I was talking about. Technically, I don't have to actually copy this. Uh, I don't have to copy this matrix down again to go to the next step. But I'm doing it so you can easily see what I'm going to do next. 
Okay, so let's look at what I want to do next. Once I get the leading one, I want to multiply this by a number so that when I add it to this number below it, it'll cancel it. So what do I add to 2 to cancel it? Negative 2. So if I multiply everything in this row by negative 2, well, that would give me a negative 2, that would give me a negative 6, and that would give me a negative 18. Okay, now what I'm going to do with those three numbers is I'm going to add them to the corresponding entries in row 2. So I'm going to add negative 2 plus 2, and I'm going to put the result in row 2. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so I put it there. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, so I put it there. And then uh, negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10, so I put it there. Okay, now, again, I'm going to copy this down. And again, you don't have to copy it down again, but I like to do it on my first example. Okay, so now this is the same matrix. I want this to be a 1. Now, I don't want to swap with a row above. Even if I had a 1 up here, I wouldn't swap because that would mess up these two guys over here. So what I want to do is I want to multiply this by the reciprocal of negative 5, which is negative 1 fifth. So I'm going to multiply everything in row 2 by negative 1 fifth. And that's pretty easy. 0 times negative 1 fifth is 0. Negative 5 times negative 1 fifth is positive 1. Negative 10 times negative 1 fifth is positive 2. Okay, so now I've got the one, the leading one, in the second row. So again, I'm going to just copy that matrix here. And then I want to use this one to eliminate the three that's above it. So I'm going to multiply this row by negative three. And I'm going to add it to row one. Well, if I multiply this row by negative three, negative three times zero is zero. Negative three times one is negative three. And negative three times two is negative six. Now, if I add these values to row 1, I'm going to get 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and negative 6 plus 9 is 3. And now I've got the matrix in reduced row echelon form, and I can read off the answer x equals, 1, x equals 3 and y equals 2. And that's how you solve uh, systems of equations using augmented matrices. Okay, so I just want to briefly touch on the next couple of examples. This example, basically I'm doing the same thing, so I'll let you work through this one. But basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply everything by row 1 by a third, and that gets me the 1 there. Then I'm going to multiply that row by negative 4 and add it to row 2, and that'll get rid of the 4. And of course it'll change the other values, but it'll make that a 0. And then, um, then, I, then I want this to be a 1, so I'm going to multiply row 2 by 3 sevenths, and that'll convert that to a 1. And then in order to eliminate the 2 thirds, I'm going to want to multiply row 2 by negative 2 thirds and add it to row 1 to cancel the 2 thirds. And then I get the matrix in reduced row echelon form, and I can read that x is negative 1 and y is 3. Now, I went ahead and did another one down here where you <clears throat> actually don't have to, showing you that you don't have to actually rewrite everything. So you can go through this one. Notice here I just took the augmented matrix and swapped rows, and then I multiplied this row by negative 2 and added this row to cancel the 2, so that gave me a 0 there. And then I, I wanted this to be a 1, so I multiplied this row by negative 1 7th and put it, in row to put it there. And then I wanted um, to get rid of the 2 using this 1, so I multiplied row 2 by negative 2 and added it to row 1. And then that gave me the 0 here. And so now, notice I got fractions in this example. x equals 1 7th and y equals negative, one, uh, negative 11 sevenths is the answer there. So the next video, I'm going to look at some larger systems for you so you can see how to do some larger systems.